Clay Wilson last updated 2239-29,092,017 photos for it there was more reason to smile for Lydia Ko on day two of the LPGA New Zealand Women's Open. Andrew Carnaga Photosports Spain's Bielan Mozo celebrated a hole-in-one on the 13th tee. Golf Lydia Ko wasn't about to give up the title fight just yet, especially with the upwards direction in which her game was tracking. Following up a solid, if unspectacular opening round of 2 under par 70, the New Zealand Women's Open host and the tournament's top-ranked player fired a far under 68 at the Windross Farm course just south of Auckland on Friday. The blemish-free display, which included four birdies and no dropped shots, moved Ko to six under and into a share of 12th ahead of round three at the first Lpka sanctioned event on Kiwi soil. It was a much improved effort from the world number eight, but not enough to leave her trailing runaway leader Bielan Mozo going into what, with good reason, is termed moving day in professional golf circles. Redmore Tuber turns her game around Hinton fans, a dash of color Kiwi amateur making her Marco satisfied with opening day effort when no worries for Welsh golfer, although she found herself eight shots behind Mozo after the largely unheralded Spaniard lit up the link-style layout with Coursera Kurt 8 and her 64, including a Helenan, co-indicated she wasn't ready to rule herself out of title contention. There's still 36 holes to go. So there is a lot of golf to be played, the world number eight said. You never know who's going to win until the final putt drops on Sunday, especially around this course. If it's calm someone could possibly shoot 10 under or better, and they could be the one holding the trophy. The weather will be a huge factor on the weekend. Speaking of weather, Ko acknowledged she had received some good fortune on that front with her round one morning, round two afternoon draw as the breeze that had made conditions challenging for players after lunch on Thursday was all but non-existent on Friday. The hometown favorite did not immediately make the most of that, starting with four straight pars before being forced into a crucial par save on the par 5 8th. Her first birdie of the day followed at the 6th, and after four more pars, Ko eventually began to find her range with the flat stick as a 15-foot putt dropped at 11 to help her pick up another shot and move to Farinder. At feedback and it wasn't long before the sizable gallery had more reason to cheer, Ko setting up birdie at the par 5 14th with a deft shot from the greenside bunker, before going back to back with a swinging 10-foot putt on 15. A couple more opportunities presented themselves on her run home, and while the world number eight had to settle for par on each occasion, she still completed an almost mistake-free round. Ko pinpointed that clutch par save at the fifth, where she had to take a drop and then make a knee-knocking eight-footer to prevent a dropped shot as the pivotal moment of her round. Making that putt was really good for my confidence because it missed two good birdie opportunities in a row. That was a momentum changer for me today. They build your confidence and that way on the next hole you go hey, I can knock this in just like I did the hole before. Seeing those putts go in visually helps mentally, they feel like little things, but they end up being bigger things going down the stretch in your round. Ko will likely need a bunch more of those bigger things over the weekend to put her in the mix when the silverware is handed out on Sunday. But a lot of signs are pointing in the right direction for another move on Saturday, and if she isn't successful it certainly won't be for lack of optimism there were a lot of positives. I gave myself quite a few looks for birdies, and missed a few too. I just made a few more than yesterday, that was the shot difference. There were a lot of solid things in my game the last couple of days, hopefully I can take that into the weekend. Stuff.